Moving on. Yeah. Baltimore offense. Baltimore offense. Against an NFC West defense in the Cardinals. We talked about it a couple days ago and raved about what Lamar Jackson did. Yes. Statistically, you've had time to study what he did. I yeah. took a glance at it as well. Cool. So let, let's get right to Lamar Jackson. Yeah. Your headline there, your film deep dive headline from him. It's just uh, we're, we're seeing a guy grow right in front of us right? as far as a thrower, right? I mean, he missed a few throws in the game. I yeah. get that. But he made some other ones where I went, damn, that's that's a throw right there. Mm -hmm. Like, he, he has had a number of them the first two weeks where I've just gone, oh, hey, say what you want. I mean, that's, that's top notch. That's like big time throws right there in the tight windows or back shoulders or the throw down the sideline to win the game to, yeah. to Hollywood Brown, right? Third and 11. Third yeah. and 11, yep. Yeah. Um, I think the one thing schematically that jumps out to me is they get such good looks, and I kind of wrote this at the top where, where I go, the Ravens get such good looks to, good looks to throw the ball into, and, they're gonna, and he's going to continue to put up numbers with these looks that he's throwing the ball into. Mm -hmm. And why? I just wrote a qu quick thing. Between personnel sets, some of their motions and shifts, uh, they do, they, 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 what they basically do to you because of that they make it hard on you to get compl complicated because defenders, oh, it's a shift, it's a motion. Okay, this guy's going this way. You know how defensive coaches are. They're not going to want to put too many things into a defensive player's, you know, mm -hmm. okay, we're in cover three. Oh, they shifted over here. We're going with the wheel blitz. And da -da 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 -da. Oh, the ball snapped and somebody misses and the communication's wrong and all of a sudden there's a receiver widing, running wide open down the middle of the field. Or right. you don't get a guy in a gap in the run game. So it's a little bit of the Cam Newton effect where – when Cam was in his prime, you're kind of tied a little bit. You're a little fisticuff to but what you can do on the defensive side of the ball because, mm -hmm. one, I'd like this to be gap sound against a really good running team. Two, man, their quarterback can run. And three, they come out in three tight ends. And then it's, you know, one tight end. And then it's four receivers. And then it's two running backs and two tight ends and one receiver. And you're just like – whoa, it's all over the place. And I do think that you have to be somewhat careful as a defensive coordinator right. because if you do too much, you're going to get your ass gashed. And I think that's, uh, I think, you know, part of the Lamar greatness that will not go on a stat sheet, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And another thing that won't go on a stat sheet, and tell me if, if you think I'm seeing this the right way, but yeah. what really stood out to me in addition to the throws, and I'm trying to think of the best way to explain this, but when it's not a rollout, when it's not a play action, yeah. when he is either dropping straight back or a little fake and then getting straight back. Right. He gets to the top of his drop so deep. He does. And so quickly. Yeah. And the moment he's there, in a very similar way that Breeze does, he hits the top of his drop and his balance and his rhythm, he's ready to go any throw on the field as well as any quarterback I've seen. He is. Outside of Breeze with that balance. Yeah, he gets there. At the and top. It's, it's I'm not ready. saying he's as good as Drew. No, I'm I know what you mean, he's though. The second best quarterback in the league. But his rhythm and balance and footwork and speed and getting to the top of his drop yeah. and being ready to throw a 20 yard out or a five yard under, whatever the play requires is as good as anybody. I, I, I don't disagree with you there. And then when he does, he gets into that top, that spot at the top of his drop. So and quickly. his feet are there, and you're right, he's in great balance. And he's, uh, you know, almost standing straight up with just a slight yeah. knee bend, right? And a little bit of forward lean. Right. And he can just flick it. Right. And, you know, again, people, when you go, oh, it just seems like it's a flick of the wrist. Usually when it's just a flick of the wrist, it means you're doing things so mechanically the right way and everything that mm -hmm. the ball just pops out of your hand because it's effortless like right. it's just bam and you go bam that was 25 yards and that really cut through the air like uh, he is capable of that I'm with you you know there was a few throws like the Aaron ones we talked about like there was like two or three throws where I go damn you know you hit that you know yeah. whatever and, and again I'm not expecting him to be perfect and is there anything about his motion that bothers you it's not the motion I think it's more of his front leg that I noticed and the plays he misses Mm -hmm. He does not really step into it. And, like, uh, I'm going to jib it for a second just to show it real quick. All right, John McDonald? But one thing he does, just yep. one thing, my only stand-up of the day right here. Yeah. Okay? And you're right. He's very much like, uh, damn, this ball's slick. Yeah. You know, he's very much always, like, right here, right? And it's just whoosh, yeah. whoosh. I mean, he's got such a flexible arm. But when he's really throwing it perfect, he just gets a little step to go with the ball. When he, when he misses, like, he missed a deep crosser one time. Guy was wide open. He just, he doesn't get any step. It's almost like he just does this, right? He just does, or it's a real tiny step, and it's all it gets to instead of being like, so he does this, and then he kind of gets stuck underneath the ball. Yeah. And the ball goes up yes. in the air a little bit. Yeah. Where when he does like what you're saying, and we see the really good ones, it's just a little step out there to then he gets it, and then the ball is here more instead mm -hmm. of like this. 
And that's just one thing that jumped out to me. But you see that for a second? Yeah. The ball? Yep. You, you mentioned flexible arm. Right. And to me, a lot of times it, 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 it's so whippy that it, it comes out in a really nice way. Yeah. But sometimes, when, because his arm is flexible, like you said, right. I feel like there's a little loop where it comes back. Like if you, if you to, froze it, yeah. it would be back here I think you're instead right. of right here. Yeah, that's and it true. just gets a little bit out there. A little too much. And that's how you miss high sometimes. You definitely can. It's too like it's like a you know the analogy I would always use is like a you know you're 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 on the you're on the tee box with your driver and you're just the, the back swings too much. Yeah. Like just tighten it up just a little bit. Right. And you won't lose control of it. You know, right. you know I'm going to throw it. I'm going to hit it 350. Yeah. No, just 320 is good. Right. From 320, we're going to get a birdie. Yeah. You know what I mean? Thinking about uh, drivers and all that, it's nice to have whip. And it's nice when his whip is through. Yes. When his whip comes back like that sometimes, I feel like it, it, I, it can affect his accuracy. I think that's bit. a very, very you fair point. There's no doubt about that. You want this slick ball back? Just leave it there. Yeah. That's all right. Okay. Damn, that thing is slick. I know. Um, I think that's the big thing overall, though. You know, just. Um, I'm very impressed with Mark Andrews. Hollywood Brown is a game changer. He's a, wow. he's a game changer. Yeah. I mean, he just, he's going to make, not only with all the things we talked about that handicap a defense when you play them anyways because of Lamar and their shifts and their ability to run the football, but now you have to worry about him and leaving him man to man. And through two games, he's going to get to the point now where defensive coordinator is going to go, gosh. Okay, who am I going to put on him? Who do I trust right. him? How many times a game do I really want to go man to man? Because they're going to take shots. Right. And it's just a matter of time before they hit one. And that was the third and 11 that, that, that they converted. And we, we always have the right. rhetorical question oh, it's third and 15, it's third and 10, third and 20. You got a good call on third and long. And on two different occasions, on third and 20, Jackson got third and he got 19 yep. on a quarterback draw, which right. helped him to get a field goal. Yes. So that's a very good the call. The run up the middle there was great. On third right. and 20. Right. But on third and 11, you have Hollywood Brown manned up and just take a shot deep. So they, it, it's not rhetorical with them. What's a good call on third and 15? I know. They might have a couple good answers. They're, they're, they're not going to let you off the hook. That's for sure. They're not going to get a draw or like things like that. Right? You're gonna, they're going to go for it. That's the thing I like about the Ravens. Like we talked about a little on Monday, Really good offenses put pressure on you. They make you defend the whole field. Doesn't always have to be the same way in which you do it, but the Ravens do that. Right. And at the, just the base level, they're very good at doing that right now. You still have time in this game for, uh, for yeah. Kyler Murray? Yeah, I got, I got some Kyler stuff. Because that was, that was pretty awesome it, to watch, too. It, it was pretty damn awesome, is yeah. right. I mean, uh, I, I think the, the thing that jumps out to me more than, hey, first off, I'll give credit, like Cliff Kingsbury's offense. Yeah. Do I want to see more? Sure. But the offense has everything you need to be successful, and he's got a few little tricks and things he does here and there just to keep you honest. I would like to say they got underneath the center twice in the game, mm -hmm. and they were two for two for 60 yards off go. of play action passes. Yep. Yep. So there's another example. Please get underneath the center. They ran the play that you just talked about with Kyle Shanahan for one of the plays. He came out, play action. The guy acted like he was in a block down. Mm -hmm. He snuck out the back door. He threw a big pass to him. Right. So always cool to see that. I mean, you, wrote, you see what I wrote at the very, very bottom? I don't know if you even have this one. I wrote, Murray is awesome. He's a baller, okay? That's where we're going with this conversation. Yes. He's, he's phenomenal. Um, I, I mean, I, I guess... Where do I want to go? I'm just going to read it verbatim. Here we go. Things I love about Kyler Murray. He wants to throw first. When he cocks it to throw, he's always ready to get that first guy like right away, right? That first read. I'm going to be ready to throw. And if he doesn't like it, he pulls it. And then what I love about him is when he pulls it, he doesn't look like, oh, let me look at the rush and see what's going on and I'm going to try to run. No, he pulls it. He might scan at the rush just a second to go, okay, am I okay? Is anybody around me? And then his eyes go downfield and he looks to strike. And He's just amazing with that. I love that he can reset in the pocket. He stays patient, and he doesn't run until he really has. Right. And his arm and his release are just out of this world good. They really are. I mean, just some absolute unreal throws. He's a phenomenal back shoulder thrower already. I've seen enough already to say that. You know, go routes, anything down the sideline, anything down the field is, uh, is like cream of the crop already where I feel – very confident in saying that about Kyler Murray. You said you have one issue with the Cardinals offense. It's the protection. Yes, their protection. I do I do think Baltimore exposed it a little. One, they're not physically that great up front, right? So they just get beat man-to-man -man sometimes. Just mm -hmm. their men are not good enough. Right. But two, um, I think Cliff Kingbury is, you know, he's going to learn a little bit like, oh, gosh, these NFL blitzes come from a lot of different ways, and i got to find some other ways to protect, you know, 
I, I can't let five guys come and they get a free guy on my quarterback. I just can't do that. Right. You know, really good offenses, like I was telling you, with a really good quarterback, five guys come, ho-hum. We'll figure out that. The back will get them, or maybe we'll sort it out with all five linemen. Like Brady, that's what they would do. They're going to go, oh, you're going to bring five? <laughs> no problem. <laughs> you dreaded bring five, five rush. and then I'll have five linemen to block him, and then my back will get out, and you're going to be really screwed because he's going to be, I'm going to have time to throw it, and he's going to be one-on-one on a backer. So those are the things uh, that I look at. That, I, that concerns me. Their O-line just dealing with blitz pickups and things like that. And then the red zone offense. Mm -hmm. The red zone offense, I think, is there is no red zone offense. They just call plays still. And and I think, again, this is Cliff Kingsbury. What is, I'm impressed with what I'm seeing so far. So mm -hmm. I'm not trying. But this is something I think his offense will have to grow into a little bit. You know, New England, you know, the Saints, other teams, they have a true red zone offense where there's like these are core plays that they don't run in the middle of the field. They pertain to – the 15-yard line and in because defenses change and they have certain rules that they abide to down here, and I just don't see that from Arizona, and that's why they've had a hard – they've been a field goal fest. Right. You know, their touchdowns in the first game came from a big throw to David Johnson, and then they had one drive where they got down in the red zone and scored a touchdown, but they've had a lot of field goals, and it was the same thing with this game. You know, they got one touchdown down there, but they settled for three different field goals, right. and that did, ultimately was the difference in the football game. And that, the best thing that they could do – to, to improve upon that, sort of like in three or four weeks, you're not talking about. And the red zone, they just run a bunch of plays. Yeah, they just they just got to find a group of plays, and they're going to have to study the rest of the NFL a little bit and just steal some things from people. I don't know what else to say other than that, but they got to find a group of plays that they go, wait, we know this is just for this area of the field because defenses are a little limited in what they do down there. Mm -hmm. I mean, for the most part, as a general rule, when you get to like the 15 and in, it's usually shell coverage. Or it's some type of blitz. And you have to be prepared for one of those two things. Right. You know, teams don't play single safety man a whole lot once you get in the 10 or 15 yard line. So you're going to see, you know, quarters, Tampa two, or you're going to see, oh, we're going to go all out blitz and there'll be no safety in the middle of the field. Uh, and and the, you just have to have a plan for those things, I think, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.